Yes, Pastor Skier. Okay, great. All right. So welcome once again. Let's pray and we will uh, get started. I uh, want to request any one of us here to lead in prayer, please. Okay. Yes, please, Jeffina. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the class we are about to have, God. God, you have called us to be supernatural down here on this earth. You have given us the authority, God, as we uh, listen to the classes. Help us to enlarge our mind about who you are and what we are called to do. And help us to step boldly outside and to preach this gospel to everyone who are lost, Jesus. God, I pray that through this whole class, uh, there will be good network connections and everything that we need will be provided to us. Uh, we welcome the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us to everything in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffy. Um, so, in the last class, we talked about the key of faith. We we took two classes to um, delve deeper into this subject and just understand how important it is for us as believers to walk by the key of faith so there are a couple of keys um, uh, so far you know that uh, we have touched upon but many more coming up let me quickly review uh, the keys here for uh, supernatural ministry we said that first we would need to understand these keys learn to walk in them and later we will touch on personal preparation so these keys would be understanding the spirit realm second is faith and you know we've talked about it already then uh, the power of the word is the third key um, the renewed mind is the fourth key the anointing of the holy spirit is the fifth key god's presence and glory is the sixth key proclamation and action is the seventh key and persistence would be the eighth key now uh, when we apply all these keys we will see the manifestation of the supernatural so in a sense these keys are also listed in order okay of importance but then again uh, i have been saying from the beginning that there is no formula so we may apply them in a different order and see them working or uh, you know it might be a key which is not listed at all you know in uh, among these eight but you see god working uh, out the supernatural through it so you know uh, practically when when we look at uh, some of the basic ways in which god moves these keys uh, come into the picture so first we said first of all we have to understand that there is a, a spiritual realm and as believers we belong to the kingdom of light and so we take the truths of uh, you know the that kingdom and we applied here in the natural realm uh, there are certain laws that are operational and we can use that you know for our uh, benefit here and and see god's works done so that was one then faith we said that uh, normally in the kingdom of god uh, we we know that people should come to god with faith so according to your faith you know it will be done for you if you believe you will see the glory of god what if you uh, uh, you know if you believe then you will receive from god so believing is is very important but there are exceptions so there are some cases where we have seen that for example the um, uh, man at the pool of bethsaida without necessarily seeking uh, jesus and not really having faith he still received his miracle so there are these exceptions so the supernatural manifests on account of faith but god's sovereignty okay uh, that's also uh, something that we observe and sometimes exceptionally people receive despite not having faith 
Now, coming to the third key here, which is the power of the word. And the fourth key would be the renewed mind. So power of the word. So when we employ the power of God's word, we can see the supernatural manifesting. And I'm sure you know many of us have witnessed it in our own personal lives. And we have also uh, we have taught others about God's word and seen the word work in people's lives. So why do we depend so much on the word of God for the supernatural? Psalm 33 verses 6 and 9. You know, uh, if somebody wants, I think it will be good if you can read it. So one person could please read Psalm 33 verses 6 and 9. And another person can read Hebrews 11 and verse 3, please. Psalms 33 verses 6 and 9. Mm. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. From 6 to 9 or 6 and 9? 6 and 9. For his ninth verse, for he spoke and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast in Amen. Amen. So uh, just a moment, Aradna, we'll, we'll explain this and then you can uh, read uh, the scripture given to you. So what we just saw is that the heavens were formed by the word of God, okay, by the breath of his mouth. He spoke and they were established. That shows us that when God wanted to work, what did he send? He sent his word. So the word of God does the work of God. God gets his work done by his word. Okay, Even when it came to the work of establishing the, the worlds or the universe, what did God use? God used his word. So God worked through his word. Okay, Aradna, please go ahead, read. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3. Faith helped us understand yes. that God created the whole world by his command. This means that the things we see were made by something that cannot be seen. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aradna, for reading that. So I think you've read probably an NIV version. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we understood that God, once again, by the word, you know, the things which are visible, they were created from things which are invisible. So the word of God, the spoken word of God uh, is what he used to create. It carries the power to create and God's word works. Okay, So when God wants to do something, he uses his word. Now, uh, let's also look at another scripture. This is Hebrews 4 and verse 12. Can another person please pick this up and read? Hebrews 4 and verse 12. Hebrew 4, 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, thank you, Zeli. So uh, we saw that God used his word to do his works. And here in the second passage, that the uh, word of God is living and active and powerful. So God's word is powerful. It carries God's power in it okay, to get God's work done. 
So why are we talking about this? We are talking about this because when we expect God to work in our lives, we must apply the word because God works by his word and his word is powerful. That's what we've understood so far. So I take in God's word you know, into various situations of my life. And uh, what can I expect? You know, I can expect whatever I've been talking about so far. When we talked about the first key, about the you know spiritual realm and all that, we said, yes, there are facts in the world. Uh, however, we also know from scripture that with God, nothing shall be impossible. He's a God of impossibility. So there can be times when the natural, um, uh, you know, facts and reports say one thing. But when I apply the word, that word can work. That word can release its power. And when we receive the power which that word has released, we can see a complete turnaround of circumstances or you know we can see god's intervention in certain circumstances we can see um, you know changes uh, because what have we done we have now put god's agent okay i'm just calling it agent but we know god's word it's actually god himself also so i don't know if i'm accurate in calling it an agent but God's powerful word releases its power and we receive it and things get transformed. And there are many examples that we can turn to uh, and testimonies that, you know, uh, we ourselves experience in our lives uh, where we've seen that, you know, the, the word of God is so powerful. So one particular um, example which I've heard uh, a pastor share is when uh, there was a couple's counseling, you know, which he uh, undertook. Um, it, it was a very different, you know, counseling that actually happened because apparently in one week there were three couples who came to pastor and said, uh, there are problems in our marriages and we need to uh, resolve this. Pastor, can you help us? And so he started to uh, meet them on Zoom regularly uh, and uh, lead them you know, through uh, some uh, guidance and, and spiritual you know, counsel. But he uh, stated that it was very unusual. Usually, you know, he would uh, have a certain way of doing it, but this time he felt led by the spirit to uh, um, follow the same pattern for three couples okay so unusual for him so basically one of the things that he did was first he said that okay uh, we will not discuss the past like you know whatever issues have happened uh, to each of the couples individually when he met them he shared something like that and he said okay let's not talk about the past because he felt impressed by the holy spirit that that's how he should do it so normally that's not how it's done but in this case uh, led by the holy spirit he told them okay let's not discuss the past second he gave them passages of scripture and told them uh, you read these passages and when we meet next time uh, please tell me what you understood from these passages about god's design for marriage god's design you know about um, what a husband needs to do or what a wife needs to do so apparently you know these are all separate counseling sessions that he had for each of these couples but the same pattern was followed and he shared how uh, in a few weeks he began to notice that these couples were actually taking the word of God very seriously. They were spending time in the word. Uh, they were reading the passages. They were understanding it. They were sharing from their learning and that, you know, some changes began uh, uh, to I mean, like he, he could see that their hearts are more open and they were ready to work through the challenges. So his observation was that, see, it wasn't that he sat down and gave them a lot of inputs 
at the outset it wasn't like that it was different in the sense he told them you engage with the word of god and let's see but the word began to work in their lives and what happened ultimately the word was what was producing uh, you know the the uh, new way of thinking the new way of working through the challenges uh, the new way of you know moving forward from where they were at so uh, this is just one example of a circumstance where you know you have a conflict between husband and wife so what has happened here they were able to receive the power of the word into their situation now there was a need and that need was addressed through the word there can be many different needs isn't it so there can be a need for healing there can be a need for um you know a miracle to take place there can be a need for a door to open in somebody's life there can be a need to overcome you know certain uh, issues that one may be battling with so there can be so many different kinds of needs in those needs for me to see the supernatural power of god i can use the word so when i start applying the word its power is released and i can receive that power and see the change okay um so yeah so that is a little bit about how the word actually works in our different situations now we also know that jesus taught about the word of god and called it the seed the word of god is a seed okay so that's what we read we we read about this in uh, mark chapter 4 and you know there are uh, parallel passages um uh, even in uh, luke um, and i think matthew as well uh, where there was a parable of the sower that you know jesus presented to the listeners where he described when you sow the word of god a sower came he sowed the word of god uh, it did not uh, you know thrive in every place where he sowed because of other certain hindrances but where it was planted that is the good ground where it was planted and it was able to grow uh, it gave fruit okay 30 60 and a 100 fold so what is the lesson that he taught from this parable he just said that we must let the word of god be sown in our hearts then what happens the potential of the word will then you know be realized and uh, the the word will grow it will release forth whatever it carries so for example uh, let's say my need is a need for healing so if my need is a need of healing then what can i do i can begin to apply the word of god uh, every single day right i can begin to speak scriptures on healing um, you know read uh, passages of scripture that talk about how jesus is redemption uh, brings my healing how the cross releases my healing and so when i dwell upon the word of god you know in this manner what happens it grows it takes root okay it takes root and it begins to produce what it contains so the words of healing which i have sown what will they contain it will contain its own kind so it will bear and release healing you know in my physical body and it will do the supernatural work for me so uh, we use the word of god to see the supernatural manifest in that particular situation okay so uh, maybe fear if i am a person who is fearful so uh, you know i can share from my own life that uh, this has been an area which was quite challenging for me um uh, for for many many parts of my my journey especially as a student uh, i remember in our courses we used to have um, uh the theory exams and then the practical and you know there's always this viva where uh, one needs to go 
and answer the questions of an external and internal examiner. So for whatever reason, I would be overcome by fear uh, for these uh, Viva sessions. And uh, for this particular situation, you know, I had listed out certain scriptures, the righteous are bold as a lion. It's only the wicked who run away when no one is chasing. I have not received a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, you know, things like that. So I, I would just begin to speak, declare those scriptures, meditate on those scriptures. Uh, and, and similarly, you know, battling this, this whole fear scenario, I remember uh, that even into my professional career and my uh, professional life, there were times when I needed to keep putting in the seed, you know, keep putting the seed, keep nurturing the seed and personalize those declarations and say, you know, I am bold in Christ Jesus. I am bold. You know, I am confident. Uh, I have a word in season on my, on my lips. So things like that. So I, I really had to sow the seed to overcome fear. So the need is very different here. You see the supernatural manifesting when you sow the seed for that scenario in your life. And uh, there are many you know, testimonies uh, out there. I heard one testimony of a particular lady uh, who was afflicted by final stage liver cancer. Uh, and in those days, this is sometime in the, um, I think, maybe the 70s, 80s or, or something like that, when there was no proper treatment for her condition and the doctors uh, gave her a couple of months um, for, you know, that, that she would only make it for those many months. But she shares her testimony about how uh, she had heard a lot about the word of God and the power of the word of God. And she just fell flat before God when she came home and she said, God, I know that, you know, the, this world cannot offer me a cure for the disease that I have. But uh, I, I pray in Jesus name that you will heal me because with you, nothing shall be impossible. And, you know, she cries to the Lord and she says, OK, you know, her husband is a pre was a preacher um, and she had uh, four children, I think. So she just cried out to the Lord and she said, Lord, this is not my time. I'm very young. I can't leave and I have so much to do. Uh, you've got to heal me. The next thing she did was to uh, pull out scriptures on healing. And uh, she started to sow those scriptures into her heart. Okay, Sow the scriptures. How often did she sow the scriptures? Uh, she says that she did it three times a day. The way we uh, have our medicines, uh, usually the doctors would say, okay, have with breakfast, then have it with lunch, have it with dinner. So in that way, she started sowing the word of healing, you know, morning, afternoon, evening, she would bring out that, that, uh, that paper and begin to read, begin to meditate, begin to declare, confess those, those passages on healing. And she did it, you know, day after day, she did it, you know, um, a week after week, she did it month after month. The amazing thing is when she went for her, uh, due checkups, you know, after this incident, miraculously miraculous even for the doctors they said all your blood reports are normal all your reports are normal so in other words they were saying that you're actually healed you know from this condition now we you know people of this generation we speculate and we say oh what is this maybe it was temporary and you know she uh, things uh, sorted out uh, things went back to uh, usual after that but uh the i think there was a small disconnect there but uh i'm back and hope you can hear me so i was saying that uh there are several such testimonies where people can affirm about this miracle seed of god's word and how it has produced in their lives but for that we have to sow the seed. How do we sow the seed? We need to uh, hear the word, we need to believe the word, and then begin to, you know, uh, walk and live in agreement to the word of God. So, sow the seed of God's word and it will produce. There's actually a publication, APC publication, um, 
called you know god's miracle seed so you could download it from apcw dot, um, um, forward slash books and uh, you can read it basically it just talks about the power of the word to produce miracles in our lives so why are we talking about this basically you know we we could take this truth and we can apply it in different situations for ourselves personally um, and for people that we are working with you know, we may for people it is uh, you know not something that they would like because normally what is the uh, understanding in our christian circles okay i have a problem i will go to the pastor pastor will pray pastor will lay hands and uh, situation will resolve okay but in every case that's not how god works there can be some situations where the word of god needs to be sown and we have to wait for the uh, release of its power we have to wait for the work of the word in people's lives for us to actually see results so that's not a pleasant or easy method but there are times where this is the route which we may have to take so again going back to pastor's testimonies uh, so he had shared uh, that during covid times um, there was one particular gentleman uh, from our church and even i i'm aware of this person uh, he was very sick but he was conscious enough to um, read messages so while he was in isolation and uh, he was not doing well at all like his breathing was uh, giving way and uh, the situation looked quite grim in those times what pastor did was uh, uh, it seems he sent voice messages uh, with scripture in it and just um, explaining what that means and maybe a prayer something like that so every day he used to send scriptures to this man who is in isolation and uh, one thing is we have to give credit to that individual also because even in his weakness he would listen to that audio uh, prayer audio scripture and he would repeat it several times a day so what was actually happening you know the word was being sown that is one thing the word was releasing its miracle power at the same time our key which we saw earlier what was that faith so faith is rising in uh, this individual so the long story short is he came out of it he's hale and healthy now uh, in fact uh, i think i i met him last week uh, you know he's doing very fine and he's overcome this was the first uh, wave of covid here in india which was uh, pretty bad in the second covid wave uh, there was a similar situation and uh, uh, you know it was this was uh, slightly different in the sense that the person who was affected by covid was not even conscious anymore so he was in you know the icu set up and put uh, you know with all uh, uh, he, he was all sort of um, tied up to machines so it wasn't looking good actually the the situation and uh, um, in this case my pastor was thinking how what do i do how do i work in this scenario again what he did was uh, though he could not speak to the man he, who was in this condition he knew that he could contact the family members so the wife and the children so he started having regular calls with the family members when the uh, individual was still in in the icu and in a very uh, bad state now people did Uh, come back and keep saying that oh you don't understand uh, situation is very bad he will not make it and uh, you know don't we don't know how long he he is going to survive it so bad reports were always coming but what does the word say what did god say about himself he said i am jehovah rafa the god who heals you so his nature doesn't change isn't it whether it is covid or any other sickness so based on what the word says what pastor did was on these regular calls with his wife and children 
he started sharing scriptures he started explaining those scriptures he started you know praying with them so what's happening the word is being sown is it a longer process wouldn't it be easier to just rebuke the sickness and you know for the person to just get up from yes that would be nice but you see sometimes the supernatural manifests through the sowing of the word of god and we have to let the word work we have to receive the power of the word in us and that is how we will see the change we will see the healing we will see the transformation so what happened then you know this kept happening and eventually he came out of uh, the icus he was at home and i know for a fact that even at home for a while he had to be on oxygen support uh, but he's hale and healthy and he's back to church now and uh, i don't know when i met him not uh, at least not you know in the recent months but this year sometime i i did meet him and he's fine fully functional uh, but an amazing restoration of health but what was the root the key uh, that that worked in these scenarios it was the word and the power of the word so you know we'll have to be sensitive to the holy spirit and apply what the spirit of god is uh, leading us to apply in uh, circumstances so this key that we're talking about is the word of god and similarly you know you can i uh, remember there was a there was a, a student a bible college student this many years ago and uh, he came to me after the classes and he said pastor you know i'm going through incredible temptation i cannot even explain you know what i'm going through and um, how do i uh, get free from uh, this situation and i just prayed i was like lord what do i do what do i tell him okay do i just pray do i bind that that spirit which is oppressing him and that is it but when i prayed for that young boy you no know, i was pretty sure that what god was saying was the word has to go in so then i pulled out you know those days there was a, a shelf uh, in in that very hall where they had stacked up our apc publication so then i pulled out the publication and from the publication i pointed out you know to certain chapters and certain scriptures and i said you know what you have to do from today every day i want you to take this word i want you to you know speak the word meditate on the word read this tell me what you understand so work with the word why work with the word because then what will happen the word will deliver the word will release its power and you, know, you will see uh, what you know only god's word can do first Thessalonians 2 13 for this yes. reason we also constantly thank god that when you receive the word of god which you heard from us you accepted it not as the word of men but for what it really is the word of god which also performs its work in you who believe Amen. So uh, thank you, John. So that's quite clear, isn't it? Uh, so Paul is telling the Thessalonians that they received the word. Uh, they didn't just listen to the word and forget about it because there is a characteristic of the word. What is that? You know, that word is what worked in the Thessalonians who believed. So this word worked in you who believed. So when we believe, when people believe the word of God, it begins to work in their lives. It begins to produce in their very situations. Uh, and we also see in the book of Revelation that the word of God is talked about as um, a sword. Okay, in Revelation 19, 15, it says like Jesus Christ will come and that uh, he, he, his uh, tongue, it's, it's like a sword. Okay, so his word is a sword. And we uh, know that Ephesians, when Paul wrote to the Ephesians about the armor of God, even there uh, in uh, chapter 6 and verse 17, he described the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the word of God also has this supernatural characteristic where it, um, it invades 
the situation and it can overcome it can overcome whether it is a work of the flesh or it is the work of the evil one you know anything that is not supposed to be there that can be broken with the power of god's word so as we begin to apply the word believe the word um, you know receive its power we will see the supernatural manifest so let me just pause here if there are any questions comments uh, we could take that up at this point or your experience with applying the word in your life So one uh, general question. Yes, yes, sure. We tend to see some. Uh, sometimes we speak both types of. Let's say um, we speak about uh, on Sundays when we have declaration, or when we know about the word which builds us up, we declare that. But when um, situations are not great, <laughs> tend to speak the other way also. Um, so. What do you think, was it would would it nullify the effect, or um, can it overpower the blessings? Uh, and we also see this uh, when we interact with people in our church. Also, like um, Sundays, or like when we talk about this, they'll be very excited. But we know what is happening also. <laughs> so, um, yeah, when we have conversation. So I just want to know uh, how badly it could affect. OK, sure. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, again, a very uh, um, you know interesting question there, that sometimes we speak two things, contradictory things, with our mouths. And what we are saying is, if we um, go by the word of God, then that will produce in our lives, isn't it? Uh, but see, whenever we, we talk about declaration okay there are uh, passages of scripture of course we all know the the scriptures in proverbs which says life and death is in the power of the tongue but luke 6 45 mm, uh, in that jesus said a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So here is the point that I want to make. <coughs> when we speak something, it is either from our hearts or it is not. So whatever I speak out of the abundance of my heart, you know, that is the most valid uh, statement. Okay. Now, just because I know about the word, its power, and about, you know, um, mentally I know huh, these things are supposed to work. So if I just speak those words without, so what is the element here? E even when we read Romans 10, 9, and 10, if you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and confess it, you know, uh, with your mouth, then you are saved. So you believe because with the, with the heart one believes and with the mouth confession is made. So... It's all about belief, John. It's all about that level. So when you believe and that belief is come, being released through our mouth as a confession, those things work. Now, if I short circuit it or I bypass it, I don't believe it, but I just say it. I believe something else. Okay. There's a conflict there and I don't know how far it will be fruitful. Did it make any sense? Mm, yes, boss. Yes, I, I understand. Mm. And also so the point that, that out of the abundance of the heart, that also uh, really matters. In sense that the attitude is on the other side. Uh, it is very difficult for them to speak the right things, uh, for, for us to speak the right things. So uh, it's also the matter of the heart that we correct ourselves, that God wants us to be prosperous. God wants us to say this. And then uh, believe it and confess it. it makes a lot of difference. But yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, yeah. No problem, John. So it'll work um, 
when we believe it so in faith we have studied this we've said that faith is not a mental assent or i know mentally that this is the right thing to do so i say it but you know there is also something known as the heart and the heart is the place where we believe so when we believe and when we speak that is what makes things fruitful and the word of god works like that so we must remember that uh, and this also would mean that sometimes it will take time for us to sow the word till our hearts are in that place of belief and then we speak it out it's very powerful okay so uh, don't don't feel bad if you if your heart is not yet in that place just work with the word keep putting the word keep studying the word and faith will arise faith will be built up and you 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 will see god supernatural being released okay so we will wrap up our session for today but definitely we are open to discussing a little bit more about this uh, in the coming cl class um sorry for options uh, uh, everyone for today uh, but thankfully we made it uh, could somebody please pray and we will wrap up today's session father we pray and commit ourselves once again for your presence god thank you for the word that came through today lord jesus we pray that we would um, encourage ourselves and people around us to declare your word and to see your supernatural miracles manifest in our lives god we pray oh god that everything that we do let it be in alignment with your word god and every word that we speak let it be in alignment with your word we pray and declare your presence upon each one of us god we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Good week. Thank you.